Hi, I'm Tiffany Patlin, host of the Tiffany Talks Health and Wellness Podcast, where I discuss tools, tips, and techniques to heal your mind, body, and soul. I am on a godly mission to heal the world. Hello, everybody. I'm so, 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 so happy to be here today back at home. If you can see, I have my background. I'm back at home in my office. And I just have to share that I am feeling so, so elevated from attending the Unleash Your Rising Breakthrough event um, in sunny California. I will be doing a live later today on my personal page sharing all of the goodness that I experienced. So you won't want to miss that. Um, Our special guest today is Kathy Kasten. She is the CEO of Lioncrest Leadership and the Corporate Alpaca Ice Cream Lady. (laughs) I love that. With a background in both small business ownership and corporate management, Kathy is a coach, business consultant, trainer, keynote speaker, and a best-selling, award-winning author, specializing in the areas of leadership, legacy, and effective communication. She is also a blessed wife, mom, and grandmother. Let us welcome Kathy. Hi, Hi Kathy. Hello, nice to be here. Oh, Hi. I'm so happy. I'm I'm just feeling so so elevated and just so happy. And um, I know I've um, spoken with you before about what you do, and I'm just so happy that you're here today because I know you have a lot to offer, and um, you are well versed in the world of leadership. Thank so. You. Yes, you are. <laughs> um, so if you would, uh, please share with us how, what motivated you to get into this line of work with leadership? Well, it's kind of a long, silly story, as you've noticed from the title that I have, the Corporate Alpaca Ice Cream Lady. I started in corporate and in about a four to five year period, ended up um, after college getting into a role of management for a Fortune 500 company. And I was doing a lot of work with recognizing employees and a a division newsletter, looking at our customers nationally and thinking about what made them special. So I really enjoyed the interactive piece of that, but life had some changes. So I left corporate and I ended up on a crazy journey. We homeschooled our daughter and traveled the country with her speaking, talking about that journey. She had um, nine published books as a youngster. And then um, I ended up in, in the alpaca industry, which is another story for another podcast. <laughs> but it was really fun. And through that, I was also really working with how to connect with people. One of my favorite memories from that time was a senior bus tour that came out and we were able to take the alpacas on the bus. Many of these seniors had oxygen tanks or, you know, things that prohibited them from normal trips that people would enjoy. So being able to take some of nature to them and let them really enjoy that was fun. Um, After that, we had another life shift because of some family needs. So we sold the farm and bought an ice cream parlor and moved closer to family and loved that. That was fun. So of course, it was a tourist town. I had a great deal of interaction with thousands of customers from big city, from small town. We had a team that worked in in the parlor. And I actually thought I would retire there as a little old lady with my little apron and serving ice cream. That's so cute. (laughs) Thank you. It was actually quite fun. And while I was there, I was doing a lot of leadership development for the community. I realized that all of these leaders would come in to have a coffee or an ice cream and chat with me. And they weren't recognizing how many shared resources were available, how they could partner. I was hearing all of their stories individually. And so I created something called the Leadership Summit and brought all kinds of leaders from the community together, from government, from schooling, from um, the private sector, nonprofits, all of those pieces. So fast forward, I had some health issues and that made me really reassess the fact that I could not continue in the type of a role I had been in and be as engaged as I wanted to be. So I stepped back, spent a lot of time thinking about the gifts that the Lord had given me and where I could best serve. And I love connecting with people. I just love it. And I love working on leadership. 
So in 2017, I started Lion Crest Leadership, which was a really wonderful fit for my life and my family, as well as being able to give back some of the things that I've learned in my journey. So that's how I got here. I love your story. Thank you so much for sharing. It's it's really incredible. I love, I just have to say, I love that you homeschooled your daughter and wow, you took her traveling. That's real world experience. Wow. It was I really thought- fun. I homeschool my kids and I would love to be able to do that. Like the goals, goals, (laughs) mommy goals. (laughs) That's the thing, you know, it's one step at a time, as you know, in all leadership. I mean, that's a, that's a piece of it is not to be overwhelmed and just to start small. Her first project, nobody in our family was an author at that point. So she wanted to write a story. I remember when she was 12, she brought me the story and I kind of did the pat her on the head. Nice, you know, mom, good job, child. And (laughs) I put it away for a couple of years. Well, then I had this thought she loved to read. And I thought my brother is an artist. I had reread this story and I thought this is actually good, really good. And so it would be fun because she loves books to let her experience what it's like to go through a printing process. I was thinking strictly homeschooling at that point. And, you know, the potential of having an heirloom for her grandchildren. So I asked my brother to illustrate the cover. I have a large family. I said, would everybody be willing to buy a copy of this book so we can actually afford to print it? And because back then we didn't have all the online options that are available now. And I thought that was the end of the journey. We had this neat thing for her. And um, then we started getting calls and emails from people asking us where to get copies of the book. And they were people we didn't know. And I thought, how do they even know about this book? Well, it turned out, you know, family members, children were taking the books to school and sharing them with the neighbors. And then it was, would she come and speak at our local event? And it just kept growing. And so I remember finally somebody said, would you like to have write a sequel? And I asked her if she was interested in that. And she said, sure, I'll write another one. So <laughs> that just started this whole, <laughs> this whole crazy trip. The first two books, all I thought about was the homeschooling journey, the marketing she would learn, the interaction with people, the social That's skills, true. right? I was thinking about all of those pieces. I was not thinking about traveling or speaking or encouraging all the other parents out there with children that had gifts. And that just came. It was part of the journey. And I think, you know, one of the things I would say to everybody today is a lot of times we don't know the destination when we start out on the journey. Yeah, It's just taking those steps in trust and really using the gifts you have and taking a little tiny step and just seeing what doors and windows open once you do that. I love that. And when we were talking and sharing everything, I started remembering that story in the Bible of the talents or the bags of money or what, if you will. And um, just imagine had she not said yes, just imagine if you had not said yes, you know what I mean? Then all the people that are in your life that you are affecting in a positive way, the impact, it wouldn't be there. Um, So I just love that you said yes, you saw that and you just, you know, helped your daughter just expand and grow. Um, Talk about being a leader. I'm like, you're doing it in your own home. You know, leadership isn't just out there in in businesses. It's actually also in the home. So that's really Yeah, absolutely. I think that's important, you know, to recognize it happens in all parts of our life, not just it's, it's about leading ourselves. And like you were talking about with the talents, for me, that really is central to everything I do with leadership, whether it's at home or with people in the business world. It's finding those gifts. We were each created with these unique, beautiful gifts. And I, I like to give a silly analogy of a lake and a mountain. Both are beautiful. Both have their purpose, but they're different. I think one of the mistakes we make in this culture too much is trying to be somebody else. We have this image of the perfect, the perfect person, right? That if I just learn these skills, if I just know these people, then I will be like so-and-so and and I will be the perfect, whatever. I think that that's a really big disservice we do because we can shine brighter and be more for the people around us when we're who we were made to be. Ugh. Uh, and that was actually one of my questions is how would you say that spirituality, our faith plays a part in leadership? And I think you're hitting the nail on the head right there, that we we have that responsibility to become who we were meant to be, to be the best we. I have to be the best Tiffany that I can be. And that doesn't look like any anybody else. Right. And you are the best Kathy that you can be. And that doesn't look like any other Kathy in the world. I right. love that. It's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful thing and it's very freeing. 
I mean, I was guilty of that too. You have that image of the perfection yeah. state, right? That you're supposed to reach. And the truth is this side of heaven, we're never going to get there. It's always a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you don't feel the same. Like I don't feel intimidated or frustrated or irritated with someone else that has skills. I don't, I celebrate them now. Yes. And I can just embrace and be happy for them. You know, again, going back to the silly analogy of a mountain and a lake, we can both be amazing and we don't have to be the same and both have their, their gift sets. God doesn't make mistakes. Mm. He knows exactly who needs to be where in creation and in time for the needs and purposes that suit his will. So I think each of us are put in the time and place we're in because we're created to be the best person to fill it when we're shining the gifts, going back to the talents you were talking about, I am not serving properly if I don't go and find those talents that are mine and try to develop them. And I don't think we always know what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so part of my work when I work with clients is helping them to determine what are those gifts God gave you so that we're not living in somebody else's expectation, a spouse, a parent, a boss, I've had numerous conversations with people in the work that I do where we've been sitting at a table and they will burst into tears. I remember a person who was especially gifted in the marketing world who worked in a company that was very structured and she was the only one that wasn't as structured, which made her very good in marketing. She, she was in tears telling me, I thought there was something wrong with me because I'm not like them. Oh, wow. And then if I just, and I, you know, so we had a long discussion and a lot of work that we did talking about how they need her. She's a completion, a compliment to, to who they are. And she needs them because they're a completion and a compliment to her. So how do we start to have conversations? And I think probably one of the biggest pieces I do in the work I do, how do we have conversations with other people where we can meet in the middle or at least try to understand each other and appreciate each other's gifts and skill sets, especially the people that drive us crazy. <laughs> because usually they're the ones that probably have the gifts we need the most but we don't understand them and they so they're kind of frustrating and irritating and we want to step away from them so how do we start to appreciate who they are and have better conversations with them so I think, that's all part of it I think um what I learned at this past breakthrough event that I attended is that when there's people that we feel indifferent to or that we resist it's actually highlighting something within us. Yes. And that is monumental in my eyes. I was just like, wow. Um, yeah. So that's I'm so glad that you good. said that. Yeah, that's so good. You know, I'll give you a silly story that kind of ties to that. So when I was growing up in the, in the disc world where I spend a lot of time on human behavior, um, my lowest skill set is in that really vibrant, emotional, in the spotlight space. I'm, I'm, that's hard for me. And most of the people I knew growing up that were in that space were what I would call out of control. So there was a lot of verbal uh, issues, you know, in terrible things said, doors slammed, all kinds of things in the extended world I lived in, not my immediate, but um, I got to the point where I avoided people that had even an inkling of that type of behavior because I immediately would jump to, oh boy, this is where we're going to go. And I don't want us to be a part of that. So fast forward a lot of years and I'm at a training down in Dallas for actually behavior training and I had gone down alone and I was going out to lunch with three other individuals that were also in training. Turned out they were all this skill set. God has a sense of humor. And so I, I remember thinking, I don't know if I can get through lunch with these three. I didn't realize that because I didn't know them before. And so we're at lunch and they're chatting with the waiter, taking pictures, laughing, setting people up on dates. It's just like this whole crazy, and I'm a very, you know, purpose-driven, futuristic thinking. If we're going to have lunch, what's the point? What are we talking about? <laughs> and so through this whole lunch, I'm laughing and I'm just, the whole thing was very fun. And, they, and it was all well done. It wasn't like they were out of control. But I remember at the end of that lunch, I actually thanked them. And I said, you know, I just learned something today from the three of you that I really needed to learn. And that was, I've been missing out on being in the moment, laughing, having fun, just celebrating being for a moment because I'm always future thinking. And so that was a really big mind shift for me that really helped me. Now I make sure that I surround myself in my personal life with people that have that skill set and I reach out to them often. 
because they really help pull me back down to earth and, you know, just get me. And, and I think that's true for anybody, whatever behavior you have, there are people like that out there for you that help you to see a different perspective. Yes. And that's really important. And that's why it's important for us to be teachable. We have to be teachable. Um, I, I just read in the Bible today, it says that um, with lack of knowledge, we perish. I mean, um, that's probably not the proper wording, but it's, it's along yes. the same lines. Like with no, I absolutely mind. think that's right. Yeah. yeah. That's a great verse. And I, again, I think it goes back to the talents, right? And are we really recognizing the talents that we have? Are we doing anything to develop those? You know, it's, it's a refining fire as the scripture tells us. And I will tell you, some of the gifts that I've had, I had to be drug into them kicking and screaming and Lord's been pulling me by the hair. <laughs> and my, and there's also been some times where God's grace shows that I haven't been turned into a charcoal briquette because I'll say, <laughs> I'll say, I don't, I don't want to go there. That's not my interest. I don't have a passion. One of the, one of my classic examples is when I was young, I, I joined a church choir and I just, I had always grown up singing, but I'd never been a director. So I get in this church choir, probably three months after I join, the director gets transferred for their job and no one else in our choir at that point has any music background except me. Hmm. <laughs> so they said, would you direct? And I was like, forget it, no way. So God and I had our own Jacob wrestling moment. <laughs> and surprisingly, I did not win. <laughs> and it was just really, um, I said, okay, fine, I'll do it for three months but then will you leave me alone? You know, I, I suppose I was being a little bit like <laughs> Jonah and many others in the Bible. So I start directing and I find out I love it. So I am still directing and it's like 30 years later, but I had zero interest in that. So there are a lot of times I think as leaders, there are certain things we know and want to work on, but there are things we don't recognize and also things that we're good at that we won't know unless we get a chance to try them. And it may be through some strange circumstances, you know, and we may be resistant to it at first. So I think that's important to recognize that God, a surprise, a surprise, right? He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows what he put in us. He knows what gifts are in there. There's a season that each of those gifts may be brought to light. Maybe it's not time for some of them. And as we grow and learn, and have experiences. I mean, you look at David, right? He's out with sheep and then he's wrestling with, with a lion or a bear and then he has Goliath and then he become king. It's not like all that happened from shepherd to king right away. Right. I think it's a lot the same for us that as the seasons change and new chapters of our lives begin, then he says, okay, now it's time for you to bring out this gift that you didn't know you had or that you did have and know you have and we want to make it better. And that's fun. It's a little, it's a little exciting, a little scary, but also very freeing to let him have the reins as a leader. And just, I love Proverbs three, five, and six. That's two of my favorite verses. And it really talks about if you acknowledge him, he will direct your path. Mm. And I love <laughs> that because I see that all the time that he drops these large breadcrumbs because I missed the little ones. <laughs> Tells me, go this way, Kathy, this is the next step for you. Yes, that's something else I learned at this last breakthrough event is that when you feel resistance, lean into it because you want to run away from it, right? Right. Lean into it and you just never know what's going to happen, but it's going to be something amazing. <laughs> I think it kind of goes to the core of why we lead in the first place, right? The reason we lead is to make a difference, to change people's lives, to have a positive impact. Yes. So how do we do that? How do we connect with people? How do we meet them where they are, which is something Jesus was amazing at, right? Was meeting people where they were and then give them something that's meaningful and helpful and really has an impact in their lives. That's all part of the journey that we take. And for me, it has helped a lot to think about when I get up in the morning okay, Lord, help me to see everybody through your eyes today mm -hmm. and help me to see who you want me to serve. Because we can get so focused on that next event or that next book or those, that yeah. next training or that next, you know, your, whatever it is for your children, the next children's event you're going to do for school, whatever that looks like, that we miss all the moments that were there. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we missed talking to the postal worker or we missed 
a wave to the garbage man, or we missed a really nice conversation at the car dealership, or we, you know, the grocery checkout, because we were so focused on when I get to this place that I'm going to make that difference. It's like, no, we can do that today. Yes. So how do we do that? And that's where I spend a lot of time with clients and also businesses. How do we really start to show people, I, I see you, I hear you, I care about you, because that's so rare and it's so needed. I couldn't agree more. I, I love that you said all that. And I think waking up every morning to be intentional about your day, to spend time with God, your spiritual, and you know, to focus on your mental and physical health as well every day so that way you could just show up being the best you that you can be. <laughs> yes. And being okay with starting to learn too where those boundaries are. You know, that's mm. another thing we talk about is if I say yes to every person every day, all the time, pretty soon I'm not sleeping well. I'm not eating well. I'm feeling overwhelmed because I've overcommitted. I may start avoiding people because I have overcommitted and I can't give them what I promised them. You know, all this stuff starts to snowball. So self-care is not selfish. If it's really focused on, I want to be the best Kathy I can be when I'm with, with Tiffany or with someone else that I'm talking to. If that means I need more sleep, then I need to have boundaries that allow that so that I can give my best when I'm out there, you know, as much as possible. And recognizing, like you said, I think intentionality is very important with that. Why do we get up in the morning? right? You've heard start with why we've talked about purpose. You hear those kind of things all over. There's a why in your day, every day you get up. There's a why there's a person around you who you can benefit and who probably can benefit you as well. I would say I get as much from my clients as I give to them because they show me vulnerability. They show me truth. They show me honesty. They show me and their willingness to share with me allows me then to take that knowledge and serve someone else because I've gotten to see inside of the lives of many people, not just my own. Yeah. And that's a huge gift for me. Yes, it is. <laughs> I agree. Seeing, seeing people, I saw a lot of people um, being elevated, you know, changing and blossoming into the person that God is calling them to be. And I agree. It's, it's a gift to witness that. And since we're on that, I would love it if you could share with us one of your favorite success stories that comes to mind of somebody that you helped with leadership. Boy, there's a lot of different stories. I bet. I think one of my favorites, one of my favorites was I had someone come to me who had been in a position in a company for about five years and was really unhappy. So they had reached out and said, I just, I can't figure out what I need to do with my life. I'm not happy here. I don't know. So part of our unveiling is always to figure out, is it the job? Is it the skill sets? Is it, you know, a, just a strange time in someone's life? Is there communication issues? Or, do, you know, do they literally need to change? So we're going through all this assessment step by step and thinking about different possibilities. And I found, I said to her at one point, when did you know that this was the wrong place for you? She's been there five years at the point I talked to her. She said two weeks after I started. So here I have this client who has spent almost five years in a job they knew wasn't a right fit from the beginning. And so I also found out that they had had a resignation letter on their computer for a year and a half oh, and had wow. never sent it. So through the journey of exploring why hadn't she sent it, what was holding her back, what were her concerns, what were her questions, we worked out a, a number of interviews and discussions with her boss and other things to kind of get answers to some of those questions. And when she had those answers, she realized she did not want to stay in the industry she was in anymore. It wasn't the right fit and the right future for what she saw for herself. So she did submit the resignation letter. She started her own business and it was in a completely Ooh. different field, something she loves and is passionate about. And it was just fun to see this huge burden. And I thought, what if she'd stayed in that job for 30 or 40 years? Oh, man. So many people would have missed the beautiful wonderful part of her that was being suppressed because she was in the wrong place. Yes. So that was a, that was one that was especially fun for me was just to see her really blossom. I've had others who planned to leave and ended up staying in their jobs because as they learned skills to talk with people, they said, Hey, I really actually like this job. I just didn't know how to communicate before, you know, so there's all kinds of different scenarios, but that was one that was a special one for me. 
I really love that. And um, you helped them to figure out kind of what their calling was, if you will. You helped them realize what their talent was. Uh, yeah, because they were suppressing their talent. And I'm pretty sure now this woman is thriving. Imagine all the people that she is positively impacting because she said yes. She knew it wasn't right for her. And she reached out to you. I imagine she was teachable. Otherwise, she would have been able to get through it. And she obviously clearly listened to your advice. And now she's making a solid difference in this world. And I'm pretty sure she's not sad. I'm pretty sure she doesn't look the way she did when you first met her. Is that right? Yes, that is true. And that's so fun. Imagine being in a room. And it sounds like you may have just been in an event like this. And in a room <laughs> with all kinds of people that are just shining and excited because they love what they do. You know, some person might love computer programming and another person loves science uh, and another person loves art. And you bring all these masterpieces together in a room that are just bright and excited and helping each other at these crazy high levels. I always tell people I could want to be an Olympic swimmer. It's never going to happen. So <laughs> even if I tried to be, I would be not the kind of a level that the people who are gifted for that would be right? So instead of us being good, we can be around everybody that's great in the things that they love, and then we can serve each other. And that's just a, mm. that's an amazing place to be. Yes. Yes. I feel like I'm grinning from ear to ear because I'm just like, <laughs> yes, yes. This is so great. It's fun. I love it's it really so fun. And um, we're coming close to the end of our episode. So I wanted to see, is there something, is there like an actionable step, something that some piece of advice that you get, can give people out there, maybe people that are in that position that this um, lady was in, in the success story that you shared, where she just showed up and she was just so, you know, sad and just not living in her purpose. What, what could you say to some of those people? Well, I think there's two steps, probably, I would say. The first was she recognized she was not in a good place. So first is just stepping up and saying something isn't right here or I want to be better at it. I enjoyed what I was doing before. I just wanted to do more of it and get better at it. For me, that was my personal journey. So kind of stepping into where am I right now? And then the next step is to take one step forward. And that could be for most of my clients, I require all my clients to take a disc assessment with me. That mm. allows me to start right away to understand how they're wired in their personalities. I can start to understand basics of how they interact in different situations. And it saves us both a lot of time and energy when I'm having conversations with them. I can gear right away that to a, a way that fits them and at least try. And so that's a first step because from there, then we sit down and talk about where are you what are the words you would use to describe yourself? I have a number of things we go through to help them define next steps. And we take little single steps. If you're feeling super overwhelmed, you're probably taking too big of a step. I would say that's a really basic thing I would share that I've seen many times as people try to boil the ocean in one shot. Mm -hmm. and that's, <laughs> that doesn't work very well. So it's okay to just take that first step where your ankle is in the water and you decide what you think of it. So that would be what I would say is just to recognize where you are and then don't, don't hesitate to reach out and really start to find people who can support you and walk alongside you as you grow. Yes. And I think people would be blessed to just work with you even in one session because you have spoken so many gold nuggets right here, right now. And so I think if you guys are working in a place and you're not happy, reach out to Kathy. Um, she has a heart of gold and she has a desire to genuinely help you become all that you were created to be. So definitely reach out to her. Be sure to check her out on her social media. All her links are in the description box. Kathy, I want to thank you so very much for coming on the show. It was such a pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you for having me, Tiffany. I really appreciate it. And I would love to chat with anybody. I've got a discovery link. You can just have a free conversation with me and we can see if I can help. That's awesome. Take advantage of that, guys. Don't miss that opportunity. Thank you, Thank Kathy. You. Um, we will be in touch. You take care now. You too. Thank you. Thanks. Woohoo. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, today for 
uh, listening and watching today's episode, whether you watched it live or on replay, uh, feel free to comment with what resonated with you, any value received, anything that you learned. Um, even if you have an opinion on something, let us have it. And as always, I appreciate all of your reviews. So thank you so much for that. Uh, you can actually help me reach my 2022 goal, which is to spread the word by inviting your friends and family to like and follow on Facebook, subscribe on, and also to sub- subscribe on YouTube. You can also listen at your leisure on all major podcast distributions. And I leave you today with this quote from Robin S. Sharma. Leadership is not about executive position or title. It is about connection and influence. At its highest, leadership is all about adding value to the world and blessing lives through the work that you do. And I have to add, You can do this just by being the best you that you can be. And that's it for me. Sending love and light to you all. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care now. Bye.